The last species that the state of California lost was here in Clear Lake. I have two kids and I'm always worried about them. But the fish thing, like, is what gives me the most anxiety. I'm just like, dude, am I gonna be able to save these guys? One of the things that we know about Clear Lake fish is that they're contaminated in terms of the mercury contamination. And there's the sulfur bank mercury mine, which is located on the eastern side of Clear Lake. And it's now a super fun site listed under US EPA for cleanup because of the toxicity of it. Mining mercury for the gold rush back in the 1800s, and it came directly from here. There's no containment for anything running off and it's just all in the lake now. This time of year, the southern section of Clear Lake is never exactly clear. The annual algae bloom seems worse than ever. Harmful algal blooms are caused by a water body having too many nutrients in it. That's kind of the bottom line of it. Nutrients are the things that are coming in from fertilizers, dirt roads with soils that are high in phosphorus, septic systems that are leaching into a water body. It's just over enriched. The carp add to the algal blooms, um, one, because of the foraging and spawning behaviors, but also when they do die, the decomposing just add nutrients to the system. It's phosphorus that makes algae grow at a tremendous rate. The fishes can't really survive when there's harmful algal blooms in place in, in the system. Mic check, mic check. Bobby. And when you hear a beep, like you'll hear it. Did you hear it? That's a carp. The estimated amount of carp in the lake is in the millions of pounds. They can really dominate a lake ecosystem. They can outcompete native fish that grow really fast in their early stages, and they can get very big, and at that point, there's just no native predators. The hitch population has been on a downward spiral the stories that I was told by my elders is there was so many hitch that you could walk across their backs from one side of a creek to another. When it comes to the hitch, the carp are eating the eggs by the thousands, you know, by the hundreds per bite. And so it's not even giving the hitch a chance to try at life. We know there's a lot of carp here, so just to see what we could get in 20 minutes. WSB has done a lot of studies on this. Like they take out carp and they see the other populations basically bounce back. See hey, dragon look at that first one. Hey, there you go. There's one. While we're out here right now, we are trying to use commercial fishing techniques is sort of testing as many areas around the lake as we can. Hopefully this feasibility study will help us to know exactly where to target. So when, when the rubber meets the road and we are actually taking out as many carp as we can, we're as effective as possible in the shortest period of time. I have been so impressed by this community of Big Valley Band, as well as the other tribes here, and how they integrate themselves into the, the things that need to be done for this lake. This is the place that has protected them and nurtured them just as they've nurtured this area for thousands and thousands of years. So why wouldn't we be listening to indigenous voices? What keeps me going is like knowing that some of the work that I do is gonna help one species one way or another. My hope in the future is really for us to come together and understand that it's bigger than a fish issue. 
if we let this lake go, it's bad for all of us. If my grandkids' grandkids could see a clean lake one day, that would be my wish. <laughs>